Welcome to St. Matthew Lutheran Church for our observance of uh, Good Friday. Uh, you're welcome to follow along with the service. If you go to our webpage, uh, which would be found at stmatthewhazen.org, and you can find our liturgy uh, printed for you there. We begin with the singing of hymn number 448, O Darkest Woe.
chapter 22, beginning with verse 39. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And, he, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple and elders who came out against him, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away bringing him to the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When, the day came, when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council. And they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. For from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. We continue with hymn number 430, My Song is Love Unknown.
23, verses 13 through 25. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people. And he said to them, You brought me this man as one who is misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But, all they, but they all cried out together, Away with this man and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection, started in the city, and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found him, in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. We continue with hymn number 436, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Verses 15 through 20. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisted together a crown of thorns. They put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own robe, clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. We continue with him 451, stricken, smitten, and afflicted, stanzas one through three. <laughs> Jesus. 
19, verses 16 and 17. When Pilate delivered him over to be crucified, they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to a place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. And from Luke 23, verse 26. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. We continue with hymn number 423, verses 1 and 2, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. <laughs> chapter verses 27 through 31 and there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him but turning to them Jesus said daughters of Jerusalem do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children for behold the days are coming when they will say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Hymn 453, verses 1 and 4, Upon the Cross Extended. <laughs> chapter 15 verses 22 and 23 and they brought to him, him to the place called Golgotha which means place of a skull and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it and again from John 19 verses 18 through 25 
There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the King of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the, fulfill the scriptures which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Hymn 437, verses 1, 2, and 3. and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A friend of mine at the seminary got called to come to school over a behavioral problem with his son. The teacher was very upset and well the principal was not too happy either. My friend sat down in the principal's office with his son, the principal and the teacher. It had occurred that the teacher was teaching about evolution and that life had started in some quagmire when possibly a lightning bolt hit it hit the water and life began she claimed the teacher had gone on to say then bit by bit through the minor changes life developed it evolved into what we see today my sons or my friend's son raised his hand politely and ask a simple question. Were you there? The teacher was stunned and said she didn't understand the question. Again, her student asked, were you there? As you can imagine, there was a bit of an uproar in the class. Bit and uproar don't really go together, but it was not really a riot. The teacher marched her student down to the principal's office and told what happened. The principal stated, we are going to have to call your parents about this disrespect. When my friend arrived, of course, this all got related to my classmate. When the story was completed, my friend leaned forward toward the teacher and said, well, were you? In a few minutes, we're going to sing the hymn, Were You There? Now the question was, is not were we there when life 
began? Or were you there when evolution was supposed to have taken place? In other words, did you witness this? Our hymn asks us, were you there when they crucified my Lord? In three verses, the hymn writer asks, if, there are, if we were there for all the terrible things that happened in our readings this evening. Although we have heard a lot more about what happened between sunset on Thursday to sunset on Friday, the hymn sums up the unthinkable. The Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world, was nailed to a tree, nailed to death, and was laid in a tomb, sealed to decompose like the rest of human flesh. And of course, in a way, we, we kind of have been there. Through the word of God preserved for us, the gospel writers wrote according to what they witnessed. And they record for us that no one was really there for Jesus. After the arrest in the garden, Jesus was abandoned by his friends his relatives, and his church. In fact, it was the church itself that was bringing charges against him. And although we heard that Peter and John were around that night, no one came to his aid. No one spoke up for him. No one did a thing. At face value, no one could claim to be any more than a witness from a distance. Why? Even Isaiah, from centuries before, bears witness to the horrible things that our reading tells us about. From Isaiah 53, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Isaiah testifies about the horror that would befall Jesus from seven centuries before the events of our text this evening. Jesus was so battered and bloody that men could hardly stand to look upon him, look upon his tortured body. 700 years before, and Isaiah tells us that the Christ will endure separation from family, friends, and the collective nation of Israel. God was indeed, has indeed preserved the events, even the predicted, even predicted the horror, so that through the scriptures, you and I could be there. From Genesis 3 forward, the blood of the seed of the woman is predicted, demonstrated in the life of Israel and promised. Through amazing preservation of God's word, we have the witnesses, and so we were there in a manner. But I want to assure you this evening that you indeed were there. You were there in the judgment halls. You were there. During the torture and the humiliation, you were there. When Jesus, the Lamb of God, was nailed to the cross, you were there. When God turned his back on his son Jesus, you were there. You were there when his life blood was poured out. And you were there in the tomb with with Jesus when the rock was rolled in place. Let me explain what I mean. This is good news for you on this Good Friday from Romans 6, 3 and following. Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You were baptized into Christ. Hear this from Galatians 3, 13 and following. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone 
who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promised Spirit. And again, yet again, from Romans 3.21 and following, but now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known. God made him to be sin for us, to which the law and the prophets testify. Old, that's the Old Testament speaking. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace. Through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ, God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, because he had left sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did this to demonstrate his justice at the proper or at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who believe in Jesus Christ. You weren't there for Jesus. He was there for you. He was there as you. When Satan charges that you are a sinner, worthy of having to hang on the cross for sin, worthy of being judged as guilty by God, judged as one among sinners who is buried in the ground to rot. When he whispers, were you there? Well, were you? You can answer, absolutely. God made Jesus to be sin for me. He made Jesus to be sin for you. He made Jesus to be you on the cross, sinful flesh that had no sin. You are baptized into Christ's perfect obedience, into his suffering and into his death, in God's mercy, because Jesus was there and there for you. So you were there indeed. Now God sees you as one who is perfect in obedience, one who has died to sin, one who has spent time in the tomb and as one who has left the tomb empty. That's yet to come for you and me, and yet it is done in eternity. Now God again sees you as one who has satisfied all righteousness. Were you there on the cross to bear the nails by, bap by baptism? Yes, you were. It was God's idea to connect you in this way, not your, of your hand. In your hands you received the nails, your head that received the crown of thorns, your back flayed by the whip, and your life poured out for your sins. And better than that, only Christ could do this, however. He did it for you because you are baptized into the whole sacrifice for sin. He, he died for everyone and through baptism. This gift is given to us, and we were there. You are joined to Jesus, also in his death. And praise God, you are joined to him in his resurrection. As we sing our closing hymn, you can answer the question, were you there? You can answer, by the grace of God in Christ Jesus, I was. Now I wait for the resurrection from the tomb and from this body of death. Christ was there in my place in death so that I might take my place in life and that life in Christ eternal. As you observed this evening what was required for your release from sin, death, and the devil, humbly rejoice. You were there in Christ and there is nothing left to be done for your salvation. Only be baptized and believe. And you will be there 
Your sins are all forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the res resurrection to eternal life, you will be there. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the bidding prayer, and as I appeal, ask you to pray, I will pause so that you may, might make a petition of your own for the cause that we uh, bring before the Lord, and then I will conclude uh, with a prayer for us all. And then you say, Amen, and we'll go to the next petition. Let us pray for the whole ch Christian church that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have, been re have revealed your glory to all nations, in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth keep we ask you in the in safety of the works of your mercy so that your church spread throughout all nations may be, be defended against the adversary and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord amen, amen. let us pray for all the ministers of the word for all vocations in the church and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens, that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you, whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially, especially Donald, our president, the Congress of the United States, Doug, the governor of North Dakota, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, our God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away this terrible disease and pestilence, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant help to the sick and a safe journey to all who travel. O 
almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak. May the prayers of those who in any tribu tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error. Call them to faith in, truth, in the true and living God and in his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into his family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their errors, and for the glory of your name, bring them into fel the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for his Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory, the Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord that we may serve you in true fear to the praise and glory of your name through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. let us pray for our enemies that god will remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation O almighty, everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth that God would send down his blessings upon them and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your grace be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits of the earth. And whatever pertains to our bodily needs, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. We conclude with hymn number 456, Were You There? <laughs> 